Alright, today I'm going to show you how to repair a leak, an oil leak that's coming from the end of your lawnmower. The front end of your lawnmower, as you can see, there's some oil right there, kind of leaking. And just, there's a nice little puddle of stuff going on here, so I'll show you how to replace that today. Alright, so I'm going to do a couple of prep things first. First thing I did is, obviously you can see I cleaned up right here, um, just the front of the deck, so I can make sure when I finish this repair that there's nothing going on. Next thing I'll do is remove the spark plug coil. What's the spark plug? Just to ensure that when I clean underneath the deck, there's no uh, possibility of the blade turning on. And then the last thing I'll do is remove both of these screws on both sides here, just so I can make it really easy to manipulate the lawnmower and make sure nothing breaks. So I'll do that next. And yeah, right now I have it chalked up with two four by fours and to make it easier just to get underneath them. The next thing I'm gonna do after I remove this guard is clean underneath the deck just so I can get to the bolts that are so before I actually start working underneath the deck. I'm gonna remove the three cables that are attached here, here, and here. And the easiest way to do that, so I get this one right here. There's a screw right there I can just undo, get that one off. As far as the rope right here, you can see that there's just a little bolt on this or this nut on this side that I can just undo and take this one off and lastly there's this cable that engages the brake when you're not using the lawnmower and right here you can see that there's a stop not allowing this bar to go any further so the key here is to undo this screw right here so you can remove this stop and then on the other side you can just undo this and then you should have that cable off and should be good to so go. last step before I turn this on inside and start working underneath, taking off the blade and whatnot, I'd recommend just, especially if you have gas left over, just taking the cap off and then, you might be familiar with this trick, but it's just to ensure that you don't lose any gas when it comes spilling out. You put a bag over and then just put, tighten the cap and then when you tilt it there won't be gas coming out. Other than that, you're ready to flip it over and I've already started working underneath and cleaning up the deck so I'm gonna do that now. Alright so I've moved here in the grass just to make sure that I don't make a mess but the next step is to get off the blade. There's a 14 millimeter nut you need to get off here and the trick I use is just put a board on one side so you can make sure the blade doesn't spin and then just put your socket on there and it should come off. I just used the breaker bar because that thing was really tight on there and I just didn't want to mess around with it. So that's how you get that off and then yeah you just unscrew this nut or this bolt and it should come off. Alright the next step here is just to remove the three bolts right here. One, two, and three that connect the deck to the engine and so I'm just going to remove that 13 millimeter and I'll take all three of those bolts out. Alright, so now I have the engine turned upside down, just sitting on top of the deck here. The next thing I'm going to have to remove is the sump, which is just removing these 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts sitting around the sump. You can even see there's some oil just hanging out right here, and I bet you I'm going to see a little break in that gasket. So I'm going to take all these 10 millimeter bolts off first, so I'm going to take off this sump. Alright, so I'm about to take off the bolts. There's one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, and eight. So there's eight, eight bolts on this uh, sump that you need to take off. Again, 10 millimeter, and then you should be able to good to go. Alright, and the last thing you need to do before you can take off the sump here is just remove the blade adapter, which, oh gosh. That's it right there. Um, you might need a little bit of a hammer to it. I know mine was really seized on there and I had to do a little bit of work on it, but yeah, and once you get the blade adapter off, this sump should lift right up and then we'll see what we find. All right, so let's remove the cover for the sump. Really hard to do one-handed. And here's the gasket and look at that. Right there's our problem. Right there's another problem. And right there is another problem. So obviously this gasket is the reason I was having a leak on the front of the mower. So I'm gonna clean off this gasket right here and then probably uh, in the next couple days order a, 
um, replacement one and get this all fixed up. So the next thing I'm going to do in the meantime is clean off this gasket, clean this area, I don't know, probably clean all around here just while I'm already have this all set apart. So I just got my gasket maker, but before I do that, I just wanted to make sure to show you one thing. So before you put the gasket on and seal things up, in case any of these gears move or um, this uh, flinger moves or the slinger moves, just make sure to set things back right. So to make sure the gears are in the right place, you'll see that there's a little dot and then two lines. Make sure that's lined up on the two gears here or else your timing will be off when you try and start the mower. And then lastly, just make sure that it's called a little nipple in the center of this. I don't know if you can see that well. Just make sure that's touching that little uh, metal uh, post right there. And then other than that, you should be good to go. Might have to adjust this again when I put the gasket maker on. Um, but yeah, and then the last thing I wanted to show you is I just used a utility blade just to clean off the gasket. That really helps. Sometimes the screwdriver is really hard and can make some nasty gashes. So if that helps, hope that does. All right, so as you can see, I put the gasket maker on both the bottom of the sump and the engine um, just to make sure that you know, there's adequate coverage. And yeah, I made a terrible mess, but you get the idea. So now I'm just going to put this back on and then squish it down and then get to that point. All right, so now I have the bottom of the sump back on and I have my seven bolts in there. I'm um, just sitting in there right now, and as you can see, I went a little overboard with the gasket maker, but, you know, that's okay. Rather do it right than have to open it up again. So, yeah, don't take advice from me on how to make a nice, uh, clean gasket, because I obviously can't do that. But, um, regardless, the next step is to just kind of finger tighten um, these bolts. And, I, I, I mean, I, this might be a little overboard, but I do it in a star pattern. Boom, 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 boom just to make sure that there's adequate um, or there's even distribution when you're kind of squeezing that gasket. The only important thing is, and it says this on the instructions, is do not tighten it all the way. Um, do not torque these down. Just finger tighten these for now. Um, and then it says it sets up a, within an hour. I might wait honestly a full day, but um, yeah, don't tighten this all down or else you're going to squish all that gasket maker out. All right, so the gasket has set up for about an hour or two. So now the next step is to flip over the engine, put it back on the deck, and then put those three bolts underneath. One goes in there, over there, over there, and then one on the other side. Um, it's hard to show on camera because I'll have to lift up the deck and screw those on, but I'll show you that next. All right, so this is the underside of the deck, and I just put on these three bolts right here that connect the engine to the deck. Again, 13 millimeter, um, and yeah, I found it easy just to flip it on its side and work through kind of this ejection point to start the bolts, tighten them up as much as I could by hand, and then use the ratchet when it was turned sideways to get it snug. And then next is to put on the blade adapter and then the blade itself. All right, so you'll notice that on the um, where the blade goes, and here's the adapter. There's that little notch right there, so just line that up on the shaft here. And honestly, it might take a little bit of coercion, so I might just tap it in with a hammer. You can see it goes all the way up. It goes up a little bit more than that. And then you just uh, put the last bolt and the blade on. So I kept the bolt in the blade so I didn't ensure that I knew which side was supposed to face the uh, grass. So make sure that you have that uh, correctly because you don't want to put the blade upside down. So yeah, basically you just line it up, put it in the holes, and then just tighten it. And honestly, I don't want to mess around with this, so I'll probably use a breaker bar. Um, I believe it's 14 millimeter, and just snug that up, just so there's no no chance of this sucker coming off. And again, uh, I recommend putting a, a board on the other side um, while you tighten the blade with, you know, ratchet or breaker bar just so you don't have to hold it with your hand and obviously so the blade doesn't spin. All right, so off camera, I just did the last couple things. I put the shoot guard on and then attached these three um, let me see this one and then that one up there. Those three cables just so that this is ready to go. Um, the instructions for the gasket say to wait a full day before putting any fluid in it and trying it out. So I'll wait tomorrow and test it out and hopefully no leak. Alright, and then the last thing to do is to fill it with gas and oil. 
which I've already done, and then I've actually just turned it on and it took a couple rips, but it finally started, and yeah, I don't see any leaks, but I'll watch it the next time I do a full mow, and hopefully we should be good to go. Hope that helps.